Welcome back to my channel where I talk about all of the various strategies that I've used to scale an Etsy print on demand shop to over six figures in just 10 months. One of the critical steps to Etsy print on demand success or really any Etsy success is having a good mock-up in that first photo that will stop the scroll when a customer is searching for items to buy. Because guess what? If you don't stop the scroll, they're not going to buy it. And when you're using print on demand, you often don't have all of the products that you're selling with all of the designs that you've created. So what do you do? You make mockups. Now, when it comes to apparel, my preferred mockup source is Etsy sellers. And that's because there's a huge variety of really aesthetically pleasing mockups that are out there for all sorts of t-shirts and sweatshirts and a variety of brands that are the most common for print on demand. But what you don't find a lot out there for are things that are non-apparel. So when you're creating products like backpacks or notebooks or my personal favorite, blankets, you might be thinking that you're only stuck with what the print provider is giving you. And that's not true, my friends. There are lots of options out there. So let's take a look at a couple of my favorites. Let's start with blankets as an example. Quite often I will create a seamless design in Canva and then when I export that and upload it to Printify, I turn it into a pattern using their built-in mock-up generator. It makes it super easy to create patterned products for all over printing within Printify, but the downside is that I still want to be able to make a mock-up of my own. So once I'm done creating my product in Printify, I'm actually going to jump back over to Canva and I'm going to start a new canvas. And I'm going to size this one as 3,500 pixels by 5,000 pixels. And that will give me a canvas that is relatively close in size to what I will need for creating the mock-up. And I'm simply going to upload the design that I originally created so that I can use it within this new canvas. And then because this is already a seamless pattern, I can simply copy and paste it multiple times to fill this canvas. Now you may be wondering why I don't simply just use this method to begin with to create my pattern and then upload the, this larger canvas into Printify. And the reason I don't is simply because Canva's sizing is a little bit smaller and doesn't always render as well for very large images. And so again, just to make sure that resolution is where it needs to be within Printify and to save myself a little bit of time on that end, making sure the resolution looks okay, I simply just use the original seamless pattern and make adjustments as needed. Once I've got the canvas filled in Canva, then I'm going to export that image as one solid design. And then I'm going to jump over to placeit.net. This is a great website for finding mock-ups, listing videos, and other things like that, particularly for items that are non-apparel. They have apparel items as well. Again, I personally prefer the Etsy mock-ups, but they have plenty of apparel options here too. But I love them for those non-apparel things like blankets, pillows, tote bags, mugs, you name it, they've probably got a mock-up for it. And what's great about Placeit is it's as simple as uploading your design. So I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to find a mock-up that I like for the purposes of a blanket. And I'm looking for a blanket that's going to match as closely as possible to the product that I'm selling. I'm going to choose this one here because it's got the stitching around the edge. It's got that fuzzy look to it. So again, I know that it's going to be a very, very close replica of the product that I'm selling. Once I select the mock-up, then I'm going to go to insert image and I'm going to upload the design that I created for the large file in Canva. Once I've got it uploaded, it will have me adjust it so that it fills the template. Again, what I started with is pretty close in size, so I just scale it to make sure it fills the space and to make sure it matches roughly the image sizing that I created on the Printify side so that it ends up being as realistic as possible. Once that's done, Placeit also has the option in many of their mockups where you can change some of the coloring of the accessories in the photo. So if you've got a home decor item like a blanket, you can actually change the color of the accessories in the picture to make it match whatever your design is. So I think that's a really neat way to make it look like your mockup is cohesive and very intentional with your design. 
Once you've got your mock-up created the way you would like, you can simply go to download. It will run through its processing and then you'll get a link when it's ready for you to download and use for Etsy. The other cool thing about Placeit is that once you've got your design uploaded, you'll notice along the right hand side that there are other options that it gives you with your image already created on it. So if I click on another blanket, I can now download another version of the blanket to use for my listing photos. And if we take a look at some of the other options for the blanket mockups, there is a video available as well. And just like with the other photo mockups, all you need to do is upload your design, make the necessary adjustments to the scaling, and it will build the video for you. To make the file a little smaller, I typically turn off the audio because Etsy doesn't allow you to include audio. Otherwise, it's ready to download and you've got a really fast listing video for your blanket or other product. Then once we've got our mockups and our listing video, we're ready to head back to Etsy and finalize that. So as you can see, Printify already loaded the basic images that are already part of what it provides as part of their product listing. Because I don't need all of these plain ones that just show the different sizes and angles, I typically delete out the couple that are sideways and use that space to upload the ones that I created. You will get a warning from Etsy saying that it's the wrong size, but that's okay. All I do is zoom in on the first image, and once someone is on the listing, it's okay if the size is more of a portrait view versus landscape. And then I can also upload the video that I created for this listing as well with Place It. And once that's uploaded, it will give me the option to crop it because this one came over as a tall portrait view, and because Etsy will typically only show a small box roughly the size of a listing photo. I do typically crop it so that it's a little bit smaller and will show up as a nicer view when someone is scrolling through their search results. Once those are uploaded and the rest of my listing is done, it's ready to hit publish just like I normally would. For this next example, I've already created a product for fanny packs and I want to show you how I can use Canva alone to create unique mockups for these designs. And while the Printify mockups are actually pretty good in this case, and while Placeit.net does have great mockups for fanny packs that match this product, I want to show you how a little bit of Canva magic is all you need to create some unique mockups for your products. Once I've got the design already created in Printify, I'm going to click on the mockup preview and I'm going to scroll through the mockups that are already there and find one where it's on a model but the background is neutral. Once I find one, I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to save it as its own file. Then I'm going to head back over to Canva and I'm going to start a new canvas. This time I want it in the size of a normal Etsy listing and so that's going to be 2700 by 2025 and I'm going to create that new canvas. Then I'm going to upload the image that I just saved from Printify and I'm going to bring that over to my new blank canvas. I'm going to expand it so that it fills the entire space and then I'm going to head up to edit photo and then I want to click on a background remover. And then because this is going in a dog themed shop, I'm going to click on elements and I'm going to run a search for a picture of a park. And what I'm going to look for in these photos is a background that's going to fit the scale of the image so that it looks like there's a nice green park in the background. Once I find a picture that I like, I can simply drag it over to my canvas and then adjust the model so that it looks correct and how I want it. To make it a little more realistic, I want to make sure the model in the front is the focal point so I can adjust the sizing and scale of the background in the photo and then I can go to the effects area and I can click on blur and I can blur the background so that again it makes the model in the front the focal point. If I want to get really extravagant with my theme, I could actually go look for a picture of a dog in a park, find one that looks like they're running, and I can click on it to add it to my existing image. Then if I repeat the process and remove the background, I can make some small adjustments to that image, like shrinking it so that it's smaller and far enough away so that it looks like it's at the right angle. And then I can edit it and slightly blur the image of the dog so that it matches that blurring that I've got already in the background and make it look like there's a dog running and playing in the background of a park while the model is wearing their dog themed fanny pack. 
The other thing that I like to do just to make the image look a little more realistic is I will grab the model or whatever I'm trying to create as a focal point in the foreground and I will go to the shadows feature in Canva and click on glow. This gives a slight glow to the entire perimeter of the image that's selected. I'll make some adjustments there so that again it just kind of pops and looks a little more realistic instead of being a very flat image. Once you've got it set and adjusted the way you'd like it, all you need to do is download the file and it's ready to be uploaded into Etsy. And just in case you're curious, as I mentioned, Placeit.net does have a selection of fanny pack mockups as well as a variety of other products that come from Printify available as part of their offerings. And so again, all you need to do is upload your design and you'd have a great mockup from one of these options as well. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you've got any more questions on how to do mock-ups for your print-on-demand shop, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I do try to answer as many as possible. And if you found this video helpful, I hope you'll hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed if you're not already so that you don't miss out on any of my upcoming content that I've got planned for this channel. As always, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. If you're looking for more helpful ways to continue the work and stay connected, I invite you to join me over on Patreon where I provide a membership to get exclusive access to my Google Drive with all sorts of wonderful tools and resources that I've created and continue adding to every month. It's also a place to join conversations as I think about future content and how I can serve you with the most amount of value. I also hope that you'll smash that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on all the exciting upcoming content that I've got planned for this channel. And finally, I invite you to check out my brand new website where you can subscribe to my own email list, follow along on new blog content that I will be building, and access other freebies that I have available on there to support you on your journey.